welcome to 3ds Max news for the month of June. We will start with news with a new renderer, Corona 10. We already saw of the news on sneak peeks, and a lot of the features looks very similar to what we had on V-Ray, but some interesting stuff. We have faster 3ds Max materials creation, they claim that it's 22 times faster, sunlight color affects clouds, Improved caustics, improved bokeh, improvements on motion blur, decals with multiple maps affecting different channels, lists for cameras and lights, no problems now with the camera flying through volumes, and a long list of other features and improvements. Another renderer has been updated, Arnold, with the new Max 2A 5.6.3 that gives access to Arnold 7.2.2. It's not a huge update, but we got improvements, with improved interactivity when modifying large scenes, improvements for global light sampling, rendering using different CPUs is now more similar between them, and noise in volumes when using mesh lights will be greatly reduced. We have as well USD enhancements and other improvements. Spline Flow is a new plugin from KStudio, a tool to help with the creation of parametric spline modeling. It's not only for static models, you can use a spline flow to create different interesting animations with the splines. The light version is free, you can open any spline flow model done with the pro version, but you cannot edit it. With the light version, you can add a maximum of two shapes. The pro version, you have unlimited shapes, and you can edit whatever you want, and it costs 40 euros. Timeline Extended is a tool by Ishakurio Laxono, very handy if you are on a big animation where you need to crop to specific timelines, and you can double click, you will zoom into the desired timeline, with right click you can activate or deactivate this specific timeline, and yeah, very simple but very powerful tool, costs $10, and you can see a tutorial by Norberto Aguilera that goes through some of the uses of this tool. Typeflow received a new update in June, adding a new modifier, Time Mesh Repair, that will detect and fix common and difficult topological issues with meshes. Remember that you can use a free version to get this modifier and all these new uh, features, so you can update at any time. A lot of different improvements and bug fixes, including a new element ID matching to Type Particle Skin modifier. On my Patreon, uh, this month I started a new series of videos where I am explaining the improvements we get on each Typeflow iteration. I am covering the last two Typeflow versions. Um, this month I covered the Time Mesh Repair, as well the new Element ID Matching with some examples. And on Patreon as well, exclusively for my Patreons, uh, we finished the three tutorials covering plants growing course that I hope that you found it very... that I hope that you found it useful, has been very fun to do. And for people that need to follow the Thinking Particle courses that we used to have on Effective Technical Directors, now the page is down, uh, but I make all the videos public on the Vimeo account. They are not very well organized, but all the tutorials for, from all the courses focusing on Thinking Particles are there. And let's just start the favorite section, 3ds Max is only for RGBs. And this month we are starting really strong. In June we had a Starfield Direct, where they showcased the new game coming in September from Bethesda Games. It's the first new IP in 25 years for the studio, that remember they are the guys that they did Skyrim, Fallout, the Fallout series, and this time it's happening in the space. You can visit thousands of planets, you can build and customize your spacecraft, and a lot of things. I was very excited when during the direct I saw in the background this image that found uh, maybe difficult, but I will say that it's quite obvious that this double menu bar, this has to be 3ds Max. So I did a little of research and I found this other making of Oblivion. Oblivion is as well part of the Elder Scrolls, the other franchise from Bethesda, where you can see how they are clearly explaining how they have been using 3ds Max to use biped to animate horses and all the animations in the in the series. So I contact some artists in Bethesda and they confirm that 3ds Max is a fundamental part of the pipeline in Bethesda games and yeah, Starfield use for a lot of things that I cannot mention, uh, 3ds Max. And we got another game, Assassin's Creed Mirage by Ubisoft, 
They showcase different gameplays on this new popular franchise that now it's coming back to his roots. And we saw some 3 d bugs in action during the video as well, you can see it here. They also showcase other interesting games like Star Wars Outlaws and Avatar Frontiers of Pandora that they are open world games based on these popular franchises. So 3 ds Max flying high and talking about flying, Steve Wilson presented a different animation that he creates in 3 ds Max with V-Ray, heavy use of Type Flow and Phoenix 3D for the company Citation to advertise their new private jets. Uh, so yeah, sometimes it's something that you don't see so many uh, times, but as well uh, 3 ds Max using for advertising uh, private jets. From Ophir Gardi, we saw this cool industrial rig that he created to allow for easily change on timings, starts and end positions to adjust. So they can adjust to whatever the client wants. You can see how flexible can be. Piotr? I cannot pronounce the other name, produced the VFX for the attack on Sorpedam, a film by Andrew Panton. 50 minutes of film, he alone created over 340 shots, 177 of those were full CGI during 7 years. This is quite a big, big uh, endeavor. And he was responsible for 3D models, textures, rigs, animations, simulations, shot designs, lighting, rendering, compositing, and grading. All the 3D character models and motion capture are done by Martin Parson. So, awesome project, one guy, seven years, and yeah, only with 3D Max, pretty cool. Alexander Koryshev created a cool Dune nuke explosion using V-Ray, Typhlow, Phoenix and Gaia, and he will produce a tutorial very soon. Alex Mgua created these very cool and fun animations using Typhlow tie bindings, cloth and VDB and Phoenix for the water. Very fun stuff. Pierce Johnson did a great work creating, uh, well, he didn't create, he did a robot that is creating paints, so even cooler. The dodge and animation in Typhlow, the robot is rigged with an IK solver following a Typhlow particle, and it's very clever and it looks amazing. Simon Nastasi doing some cool close simulations in Typhlow, replicating a famous video done by Tyson Bell itself, and looks very cool. We have more Typhlow staff from Tomoya Kimpara doing a very cool animation using Typhlow and Typhlow. Also from Tomoya, he did this cool mass simulation with Typhlow particle physics that looks amazing. Michael Shirliaric showcased this cool environment to practice, inspired in Lord of the Rings. It's rendered in V-Ray, it's using Typhlow and Forest Pack. You can see a making of where you can see all the layers that he created. And yeah, looks, looks very, very good. I think to remember that he used Typhlow to create the roads uh, procedurally, and yeah, amazing. Lucas Milner did a video showcasing a good use for the new array modifier in 3ds Max that it's very flexible, and as he's saying, it's a very cool tool because it's simpler than Rayclon, you can do very easy things with the stack, and it's quite flexible. If you want to know more about the array tool, Paul Neal covered as well this tool with some tutorials creating a rail, a total procedural rail system with the array modifier. From Gregory Glesakos, he shared a cancel project done in Phoenix and rendered it in V-Ray. 
It was a shame that was cancelled, because I would like to see more, it looks very good. And from how are they? He keeps creating fan art for a Star Wars and a Star Trek, and here another one, rendered in V-Ray 6 GPU using an RTX 4090. The render times were between 1 minute and a half and 8 minutes and a half, and he used Embergen for the explosions, and he ported these simulations into 3ds Max using the V-Ray volume grid. I think that the explosions looks dope. And if you want to learn, we have some new tutorials. The channel that it's called Watch Me Animate has now 8 different tutorials covering idle animations for different characters. I think that they are great. And if you are into animation, check it out because uh, they are free. And we will have a free webinar by Killworks Studio next month covering custom workflows to create immersive game experience will be in July 11th. And that's all for this month, guys. If you like it, please give a like, give a comment, share it with your friends, subscribe if you're not subscribed. And thanks a lot to all my Patreons, where we are increasing the community, we are sharing tutorials, exclusive tutorials for my Patreons. And being one of my Patreons, you help me a lot keep doing these videos. Thanks a lot, guys, and see you soon. Bye.